musher monday so melissa from twitter had a couple questions about camping which is what we're doing right now um so i'm just gonna go down the list of questions uh so melissa is asking about camping for distant mu distance mushing which is like a lot different than just going camping with your friends um even though right now we have this lovely fire uh that's actually not very common okay so melissa want to know do we take the straw with us when we leave um and do we dispose of it elsewhere so yeah we take the straw with us and um we will just leave it here on the ground um, where we're camping and we use this camp spot frequently and so the straw kind of builds up this bed that they know about but we use fresh straw every time um and does it get reused on later camp and um yeah kind of but we like i said we use fresh straw because um it is it's going to be cleaner and not wet um melissa asked do you usually camp once per run or more for right now we're just camping once per run because it is um just the beginning of these guys learning how to camp and um later on in the season we'll camp a couple times per run so um we'll do like three runs in a row with two camps but people will do even more than that to prepare and then of course when we're doing a race you do many runs in a row with what camps in between including at the checkpoint we call the you can say the checkpoint is kind of like a camp. Um, it's pretty similar. Do we increase the amount of time that we camp? Um, yes. So we started, our very first camp was only f like 45 minutes or an hour, and now we're camping about three hours. Um, three hours is like a plateau. We'll stop there for a while, and we won't increase uh, much. But we will later in the season get up to like six to eight hours because... Um, in the in the race we're doing the copper basin they will stop at the checkpoints for six to eight hours um, depending on our schedule <clears throat> um, and we camp overnight for training uh, nah, we sometimes will but not very often um, usually we just keep it shorter am I obscured by the smoke uh, no you're good <laughs> um, anyway I just think that's a cool special effect uh, anyway, so, um, uh, if we train, if we camp overnight, yeah, sometimes we'll camp overnight for fun, but less for training. Um, it can be a training tool, but more often it's used just for fun. Like if you go have Thanksgiving somewhere and you stay overnight, um, or if you go to one, like the BLM cabins, that's fun. Um, is a time like this, you'd melt snow for the dogs. Uh, we just actually practice melting snow so that Sarah could learn how to do it. Uh, even... Even on a long camp, the very first meal that they eat, I bring with, and then I'll, I'll cook them food. So yes, we will melt snow for the next meal, which might be later in the camp. If it's a long camp, like an eight hour camp, they'll get two meals. Um, or it would be on the next camp if we're doing multiple camps in a row, or maybe it's just for when we go home. Um, let's see, do you have a special place for the fire? Uh, yeah, I guess I just kind of tried to pick a place that the dogs won't run into when we leave. But we don't always have a fire. When we're melting snow, we're using a cooker, and I'll show a video of that, what that looks like. So that's a specially constructed thing that only mushers use that uses heat, um, which is a an antifreeze, I think. Uh, yeah, but it's basically just alcohol that, that burns really cleanly. Uh, so do we feed them a snack, or do you feed them a regular size meal at the camp, and then a snack when you go back? We will do a, kind of a combo of all those things. They'll get a snack right when they get into the checkpoint. I like to also give each of the dogs a, a handful of kibble right when we get into the checkpoint or camp because it gets their metabolism going and they love eating the dry kibble off the snow. So that's like just a really nice thing. Right, right away they get a handful of kibble. We didn't do that this time, so Sarah didn't see that. Um, but usually what I'll do is I'll do a handful of dry kibble on the snow immediately, first thing, before anything else take off booties, give them straw, then do a snack like fish or a meat snack that's cut up, and then do uh, food as soon as possible. Um, a lot of people who are melting snow will wait for quite a long time before they uh, are feeding because they're cooking their water, which can take like up to an hour. I try to feed them as fast as possible. And if, I'm, if I have the meal ready, I might do kibble on the snow uh, booty straw and then just feed them and, and skip the snack and do a snack later uh, When they're racing we try to get as many calories into them as possible. So we'll do quite a bit um, 
and it might be like meal snacks. If they don't like, if they don't like their meal, maybe they'll like a different kind of snack. We'll kind, we'll try all kinds of things. Um, let's see. It's important for the distance. So the dogs can have a rest and keep going. Yeah. So Melissa mentions that it's important uh, to distance mushing to learn about camping and um, to have a rest for the dogs. And like that's actually one of the most important things is trying to get all of your chores done as quickly as possible so the dogs can sleep. So they're all curled up and sleeping right now. They're like, why is Marie talking so much? But they're doing, you're doing good. Except for Annie, who's, who never wants to lay down, but she's sleeping, sitting up. Um, but everyone else is all curled up. They know that they are supposed to be asleep and they're doing great actually. Um, and that's the most important thing on a camping run. So uh, thanks for your questions, Melissa. And I hope uh, that helps clear some things up or maybe it makes things more confusing. Who knows? Uh, so anyway, <laughs> it's the first time in a while we've done Ask a Mushroom Monday, but thanks for tuning in. Woo!